You're listening to The Curator Podcast, Season 2, Episode 9. An interview with Jeremy Bohm from Tushia Mori. Jeremy, it is an utter pleasure to actually meet you. Um, how the hell are you doing, sir? Uh, I'm doing good. We've we've been over here for over five uh, or about five weeks, as of like I think today, or maybe as of tomorrow, it'll be five weeks. So, uh, and we go home in five days. So, it, it's like it's in that part where it's like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, but I'm ha- this tour has been incredibly fun and overwhelming. So I'm. I'm in I'm in good spirits, but it's also it's a weird it's that weird. You're happy to be here and you're having a great time, and the shows are awesome, and the people are awesome, and the bands we're on tour with are awesome. But at the same time, you know that home is soon, so time is moving as fast as it is slow. I mean, sometimes you can be on the road and have the best time, but you still want your own bed. Yeah, yeah, there is that. Yeah. So uh, I seen you post on Twitter, and we talked about it a lot a second ago uh, that you really like Glasgow. Top five, you said? Top five. Why? Uh, I'm infatuated with the music from here. Um, like Bell and Sebastian's like top three favorite bands. Uh, Camera Obscura, Arab Strap, Mogwai. Like, it, like there's just so much good that has come out of here. Um, so, but specifically Bell and Sebastian, like I, I whenever I come here, I like to just sort of like pick a record and just kind of walk around. And also, I, I mean, there's such a cool community around this venue and everything, at least from what I see, like Mono is always a cool place to go, you know, grab a coffee and shop for records and, and whatever else. And uh, we've made a lot of good friends here. And I don't know, it's just, it. I think if I was to move ever to the UK, I would either go Glasgow or Brighton, but I'd probably go Glasgow. So did you pick up any records today? You know, I didn't. Um, I didn't. I've bought a lot on this tour. Funny enough, there was a Leonard Cohen bootleg that they had there. That I was that, and earlier on in the tour, I bought a Leonard Cohen bootleg, and it's legitimately the exact same recording, but just uh, completely different pressings and cut co- and like covers. And like one says it's at a, one said like an FM broadcast, the one today, and then the one I had bought says live at the complex in Los Angeles. So it's like someone got their information wrong, but it's the exact same set list and the same date. So I was like, okay, I, don't, I guess I don't need to buy both of these if it's the same record. When did you first become obsessed with collecting records? When did I become obsessed? Uh, is obsession the right word to you? Oh, it's a definite right word. Um, 2001 is when I started like officially collecting. So it's been it's been a haul, 16 years. It's crazy to think. What does it look like? I, I can't even picture it. It must be a whole wall, a whole room. I have a room. It's, it's the second bedroom. It's called the record room. Yeah. I, I like to call it like... I, I say the office so it doesn't sound as intense, but it's the record room. Like, it, yeah. It used to be the record room and also where my the cat box was. <laughs> and But the cat has now since passed, so it's officially just the record room. Just the record room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The room for all the records. Yeah. Um, I was, it makes me wonder then, see Secret Voice, was that kind of born out of the same kind of obsession? 